Among the thousands of beautiful cenotes and caves throughout the Maya world, few are as spectacular as Balancanche Cave near Chichen Itza. Here at the Hacienda Chichen in December 2013, Dr. David Stewart conducted a week-long Maya field workshop. In this segment, David introduces his father, Dr. George Stewart, who explored and mapped the cave in 1959 on behalf of National Geographic. Because of the slide projector and darkened room, the video is sometimes below par. Fortunately, it does not take away from the exciting discoveries George Stewart made more than 50 years ago. But just to let you guys know, Balancanche, uh, we will, of course, we'll go see it this afternoon. It's uh, and ritual caves are, are a very important part of Maya studies and of Maya archaeology. There's some famous examples of ritual caves uh, in Belize and Guatemala, uh, places like Nachtunich, where, where uh, my dad was also a big part of uh, the discovery of that back in 1980. But Balancanche, uh, along with Loltun Cave in the Puk area, is probably the most important archaeological cave in Yucatan. I just think it's so great that he's here to talk to us about it. In 1958, I was hired by Bill Andrews to survey and make a map of Zebul Chaltun. And we got a phone call from Chichen, from Fernando Barbachano, who's the manager of the Mayaland Hotel then. And uh, he said that one of the helpers at the hotel, one of the guides, uh, had made a major discovery in a cave and he was scared something was going to happen to it, wanted to get somebody over here to, to work on it. Uh, Berto Gomez uh, came and talked to him. I knew about the cave because it had been published by the Carnegie Institution of Washington back in the 30s. What Berto had done, he had gone in the cave because there were a few pot shards around, and it was a cave. It was a beautiful cave. So, but on the end, he saw a big patch of, of, of packed dirt. Beyond that was a hole in the wall about 18 <coughs> inches in diameter. Uh, and he squeezed through that and up, up a slope and came out in a huge chamber and then walked and kept looking and he came out and he, he kept seeing uh, incense burners, double cones with pictures of the rain god Tlaloc on them and painted different colors. And some were stone, some were uh, ceramic. So Bill Andrews assembled a crew. I was to map the cave and draw all of the incense burners. Willie Folan, who's now an archaeologist in Campeche, Victor Segovia Pinto, who was in Merida, uh, came along to, to make a wire recording of whatever was going on. And Richard H. Stewart, spelled differently than my Stewart name, and we lived in the Hacienda Chichen. That's Willie Follon on the left, uh, Moises Rodriguez from uh, Piste on the right. That's a map that I made, and uh, the entrance is up there at the upper right. And you can see that. You go down a rocky slope, and uh, up there where it says sealed entrance, the cave up to there was known for many, many years mm -hmm. since, uh, well, since people started working at Chichen. Immediately, it became evident that there was a lot more to the cave than had been known. And every little corner seemed to be filled uh, with incense burners, still sitting up, still with the incense in them. And, you know, there were almost footprints and fingerprints in there that were Maya. We made our way down here to the group one, the big, the so-called tree, the stone tree in the middle of the cave. It was a stalactitic column, or stalactitic, I don't know. Anyway, and with what looked like foliage in the, in the little uh, stalactites. Any of the Maya that went in with us, the Tsi brothers, uh, Camilo and Gustavo, and uh, everybody uh, who saw it, who was from the local area here, said it's a stone tree, and this is the most sacred spot we've ever seen. Uh, it looked like a stone saba tree. And, uh, and then we went past that to the lower right, and a giant thing, a giant pile of uh, miniature matates and manos, little grinders for chiles, and, or just grinders to represent corn grinders. 
and they were sacrificed in a big pile. Then we saw the water tunnel. That's in black. The water tunnel started as about the size of this room, and then it went down gradually. It was full of water, and uh, by the time you got over near group four on the right, I had to map it. So I had a little rubber raft and, a, and a, an old batea that was narrow, uh, on my washboard. And uh, I floated my Brunton compass in that as long as I could and measured the batea to get the, you can imagine the accuracy of this map. <laughs> uh, and so my head was on the floor and the roof was here, the ceiling of the cave, and the water was here. <laughs> And so, and all the wild blind shrimp were biting me. <laughs> it was really, you know, incredible. But uh, we realized that, you know, there were incensarios along the way in the water. So we came to the conclusion that maybe, maybe, you know, this had something to do with the drought. Maybe these things were placed in yeah. before the water level rose. So I ran a transit survey and came over to the sacred cenote and made readings and the water level was identical. Um, and there's Gust uh, Camilo at the top, Gustavo Tzib, the two people that helped us the most. Uh, there's the scolopendrum centipede that we saw in the beginning. The first thing, the first living thing we saw in the cave, which are very dangerous things. They have the abrazo de infierno. Uh, yeah, and you can see how big it is. That was taken in the Carl Rupert cabin. We brought it back to. We were supposed to collect specimens for the Field Museum in Chicago, and this was another side of the work that produced much joy, uh, because we would see coral snakes. Anyway, uh, so we, um, you know, put up with all this stuff. Next, go ahead. Uh, Luis Covarrubias came down, Miguel Covarrubias' brother, who was quite an artist himself. He did all the paintings and maps in the Museo Nacional de Antropología in Mexico City. But Luis came down and uh, made a painting of the central chamber, the tree, the stone tree. And that was, you can see the incense burners lying around, there's stone ones and, you know, uh, I had to record the location of all of these that's a sketch that I made just to number the things. That's a beautiful sketch. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I made another drawing to shade to, they wanted something for a publication. Does everyone know what a metate is? Yeah, yeah little a little, little, little corn grinder. They're a miniature, well, a real metate for grinding corn. Yeah. These are not real ones. These are about this big. They're miniature corn yeah. grinders. Yeah. They're yeah. ritual about, art. Yeah. yeah. About the size of an iPhone. There's Raul Pavon, the late Raul Pavon, who was the head archaeologist in uh, Campeche. So he was looking at the matates. Oh. And there's the matates as they are probably arranged now. Willie Fulham is putting them in there. This is still 1959. And he's arranging them there, the manos over there on to the right. There's the water tunnel full of blind shrimp. But it was with the extreme hesitancy that you, you, you go in. I know it was Evil Chaltoon, it was a uh, little fish. And, and, yeah. But anyway, you can see the incense burners as Willie comes at the end out into the water room. Uh, incense burners are underwater. Sketch of the water room with an upright stone and, and the incense burners. The, the incensario at the bottom it's probably made in the imitation of a, a young saber tree with the spines on it. Next. There it is. Isn't that too much? Yeah, 900. Nine, I think it's nine, 900 to 950. Oh, yeah. that's Domino Classic. So it's yeah. very late. Yeah. Very, very late classic. Anyway, uh, next. Yeah, there's Richard Stewart who had climbed up to a niche. The cave walls were full of stuff. Uh, he's photographing a ceramic deposit next. Yeah, these were all over the place. Yeah, there was some uh, uh, maize, corn grains inside. Anyway, uh, 
Willie Fulton got the idea that this should be, that we had violated a Maya cave, which was true. A bunch of gringos, including women, had been in the cave, and this was not good. So Willie went down to Ixcalacop, town down near here, and uh, found that the local men, the causer, the, the, uh -huh. the Maya priest, whatever, uh, <clears throat> Romualdo Joil, had uh, a deep interest in our activities, we organized a ceremony, a reverent message to the gods, a combination purification ceremony for the cave and a uh, rain ceremony. There's me drawing one of the incense burners. I had to draw those one to one. Each one, eyeball, measure, headlamp. This was taken with a flash. Otherwise, I had to go with the headlamp to the incense burner to the paper, which was, you lost a little time, too. I got to say, that's a clean white t-shirt for being in a cave. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> there are several people that are capable of this. Ponciano Ortiz was one. Ponciano dug those Olmec wooden heads out of El Manati Swamp, and he always wore a complete white suit that never got a spot on it. Anyway, uh, one time a, a rock fell out of the ceiling and landed on my drawing board. Oh, better and than on the forehead. Better than on the forehead. Oh, and? I had start to start over, over again. again. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. But anyway, that's uh, me. There's Bill Andrews. And uh, there's Romualdo Joil from Ixcalacop. And there's his assistant who was meditating. <laughs> And as you probably know, Bill Andrews, Bill Andrews is the father of uh, Tony Andrews, who works in northern Yuc northwestern Yucatan, and uh, Will Andrews, who was head of the Middle American Research Institute at Tulane for many years. And so they made Balche, uh, sort of a, I considered it an emetic. <laughs> and so we had to drink some of that. and. Uh, they were preparing the stuff for the ceremony. The Reverend met a 29 hour ceremony. What? Oh, wow. And you couldn't sleep or anything. If you had to, you'd go way in the back of the cave. And, yeah. Oh. So they put buckets of chicken, black boned, black skinned chicken, uh, around <laughs> next to the original location of the incense burners and bowls with sacred deposits and uh, plants. Uh, I forget the name of the plant. Ruda. Huh? Ruda. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Willie Fuller and I were asked to go through the entire cave several times, sweeping away oh, no. bad stuff. One mistake that was a bad mistake that was made is that Bill Andrews brought in a pitcher of martinis. <laughs> and, and this had affected some of the people. Plus, some of the people smoked. Oh. Uh, uh, oh, but they started simultaneously while we were in there also, and I was back near the water room when I heard this huge thump, and, and dust started coming from the front of the cave, the entryway. Turned out they were increasing the size of the opening so tourists and things could come in, increasing the, the hole that led to the thing, and as they did this, the, the roof of it collapsed. Yeah, but it created a space above that was equal to the space below. So we crawled through that. It was kind of a surprise. And they put up candles. I think the putting of the candles was done specifically for a photograph. I don't think the, the Maya would have done that. Next. They're the young boys who each one acted uh, out the sounds of a different species of frog doing the thing. Next, there's Fernando Barbachano in the distance and Alfredo Barrera Vasquez, the great ethnologist and linguist. Uh, and this is late October of 59. Where is Barbara Chano? And we, uh, Victor Segovia is down there in the background somewhere. And, uh, you know, but Fernando would come just about every day. <clears throat> he was so interested. And 
most important, he would send a big vat of food from the Myland Hotel <laughs> kitchen so we wouldn't have to leave the cave. No, we ate right outside the entrance. Anyway, uh, that's, that's part of the ceremony. Next. There's me and Willie Folan. I talked to Willie a couple of days ago. He's 83 now and uh, was on his way to Florida to have his uh, pacemaker checked. <laughs> what do you do? You know, and uh, they were, there we are with our leaves getting ready to sweep the cave out. And uh, I have on my Buddy Holly glasses. <laughs> and these are some of the incense, just as we found them. There's matates down below, two incense burners. They were all at the bases of stalactitic formations. And that art style, I mean, is that? That's mm, sort of. Mm, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, yeah. it is, yeah, I mean, the, the symbolism is. Yeah. Uh, Follow up, you know, yeah. you know, the goggles and. But you know, I think this is kind of a, almost like a folk style. It's not. Yeah. It's um, not um, the most elaborate kind of incense burners at the time. No, they were cool. Yeah. <laughs> but hand me that rolled up thing. Mm -hmm. That's a cross section of the cave. The entrance. The sealed room was right in here, I think. No, here. And it just, no, the seal, the seal on the wall. New chambers that led all the way to the big tree chamber. Yeah. And the tree chamber is down here at the bottom, there. And then the two, there's the, the uh, water tunnel. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's really small. And I oh, hope. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and another one. There wasn't a spectacular, but they, they liked the water, I guess. It doesn't, doesn't change a lot in elevation. No, no. In fact, we tried to drill a hole back in here somewhere well, so that, no, I'm sorry, back in here, so that air could get in, because it was pretty close to the surface. There were tree roots in some of the chambers. But it just didn't work out because of collapse threatened. So, yeah. George's daughter, Dr. Ann Stewart, then explained the logistics of touring the caves for the participants. The group found them every bit as spectacular as promised. 